Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, thanks for watching. Well, first and foremost, stay safe out there. How about this? Reopening the Pennsylvania economy, weathering the financial storm. But first, let's get inside Pennsylvania state prisons and coronavirus. As they say, let's get to it. Welcome to the fast-paced and unrehearsed weekly discussion featuring the leaders who help shape your world. Join us as we address the issues that impact you each and every day. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Welcome back. Well, joining me is the Pennsylvania Secretary of Corrections, John Wetzel. Mr. Secretary, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, first of all, you have a long career in corrections, first in Franklin County, then you were appointed by Governor Corbett to head Pennsylvania's prison system, I'll put it that way, state prison system, and then you were re reappointed by Governor Wolf. Do I got that all correct? Yeah, I've been around a long time. That's, that's yeah, what Well, you've got to... a lot of experience. Guilty as charged. Very well respected. All right, let's start. Coronavirus, the prisons, as, as you know better than anyone else, you're, you're tightly congested. You've got uh, officials that operate the prisons. You have the inmates themselves. What kind of a challenge has, has that been to keep the folks who work in the prisons as well as the inmates safe? It, you know, it's really been probably the biggest challenge I've seen. I've been in corrections for 30 years. Uh, when you think about uh, a disease that um, it's really an outside in threat. So early on, we were really concerned with staff bringing it in to the inmates. As you, as you uh, alluded to earlier, folks live in pretty close proximity. So a notion like social distancing has not been part of correctional practices historically. Three things really make this uh, very complicated. One, the fact that somebody can be asymptomatic and, um, and share the disease with somebody else. Um, two, that the incubation period is 14 days, so you can actually have it and not know you have it. And then three, that it's so uh, deadly for people who are immunocompromised. And when you look at our population, uh, we have about 44,000 in prisons. About 12,000 of them are in the high-risk group for complications from COVID. So those three things make it very challenging, which is why we you know, shut down visits early on. We shut down basically inmate movement off the block. We're screening all staff when they come to work. But it, it's completely changed our operation in corrections. Well, it's, and, and you, do, you do not have a large number of identified cases in the prisons, at least as far as I've been able to read and, you know, from information that you all put out. Is that correct? It is. So far, we have about 70 staff members who've been positive for COVID. We have about 28 inmates currently. Um, but it's a, it's a constant challenge. Now, fortunately, those 28 inmates are at three prisons. So SCI Phoenix in Montgomery County, which, as, as everyone knows by now, that's where the, the disease first started in Pennsylvania. Um, so that's our most cases. Then we have three at Huntington, and we have one case at SCI Fayette of, of inmates. So we've done a good job, and it's because of the mitigation strategy. So weeks ago, everyone wears masks, inmates, staff, which is not obviously not normal. We normally don't allow folks to cover their face inside prisons, but we think that uh, being super aggressive with mitigation, masking everybody, stopping visits, um, at least stopping face-to-face -face visits. We're doing Zoom visits like you and I are right now. Yep. One last question. One last go question ahead. before I let you go. About 1,800 inmates have been scheduled to be released. Uh, go Governor Wolf and you have worked on that. First of all, how is that going? So the reprieve process, so our current release process is already working. So we, our population is down by about 1,300 since March 1st. The governor two weeks ago signed an executive order to allow us to reprieve nonviolent folks who are vulnerable with less than a year to serve. And we currently have released about 116 of those under the governor's reprieve order. Well, look, I want to thank you for coming on the program and please, uh, you stay safe and hope, hopefully all your folks will stay safe in these very unprecedented times. And thanks for the work you're doing for uh, the citizens, the residents of the state of Pennsylvania. Have a great yeah, day. Just let, me, just let me briefly say, I got to give a huge shout out to my staff. Our staff are showing up every day, putting themselves uh, in a dangerous situation. I just have a world of respect 
for the men and women who work in corrections across Pennsylvania. Tough, tough, tough job. All right, stay safe. We'll interview you again. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association and Partners for Public Education, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Joining me now is Representative Jordan Harris from the 186th District in the city of Philadelphia. Last week we had uh, the Majority Leader Brian Cutler on, Representative Harris, and I thought we'd get the Democratic point of view and guess what it's all about. Can we get the Pennsylvania economy on the road to recovery? Democrats and Republicans seem to be on different pages, but this week, as you know, Governor Wolf came out with, if I remember the correctly, red, yellow, and green. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Well, talk about uh, your sense about the recovery and, and what you, how you think it ought to take place. It's hugely important to the state. Well, well first of all, uh, Terry, let me thank you for having me on again. I appreciate it. Um, you know, what Governor Wolf did this week is actually put a plan in place uh, and not uh, a haphazard uh, approach to how we reopen the economy, understanding that Pennsylvania is still accumulating new uh, positive cases of COVID-19, and there are people who are still losing their life uh, to COVID-19. So what the governor is looking at is a, a approach where we look at the, the whole state and look at which regions and which counties of the state may be in a position where they can open up uh, in a gradual way and not all at once, um, doing it methodically, uh, doing it using medical science and doing it um, with the backdrop of protecting lives being the most important thing we do. Yeah, well, the, the interesting thing about it is there are a whole no a lot of counties up in the northwestern part of our state and in north central Pennsylvania where the virus is, is, is you know, the effect has been pretty minimal on, on the residents. And so are we looking at, at regional approaches first, opening up more in the regions before we get into the hot spots, so to speak, like Philadelphia, and even where I live in Lancaster County, the Southeast in general, and up in the Northeast in, in, in Monroe County and up, up, up in the Pocono regions. Is that the way you think it ought to start? Well, I think what you see is the governor and Dr. Levine looking at the numbers, looking at the data. I mean, let's be clear, many of these places that don't have a lot of, of, of positives, one, they don't have a lot of residents in the first place, and, and the residents they do have are very spread out. So the, those residents are uh, permanently, permanently socially distancing um, because unlike Philadelphia or uh, Montgomery County or Chester or Delaware County, those folks uh, are, are living pretty spaced out. So what they're doing is they're looking at the data, looking at the numbers and saying, okay, uh, Tioga County may not have a certain amount of cases. So, you know, the folks in Tioga County can go back to work. Um, you know, that's what um, I think the governor is, that's what I see the governor doing. And that's the plan that he put in place. And he also did, a, I think it's red, yellow, and green. You know, red is our total shutdown. Yellow is kind of a midpoint uh, where certain things can go back. And then green uh, is, 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 is a more advanced uh, rollout and in, in opening up. But I think folks need to understand, I believe we're living in a new normal where you will see people walking around with masks on, even when the economy is, is, is fully open. You'll see people still using hand sanitizer or socially distancing. You'll see people still uh, uh, not giving handshakes and, and different things of that nature because I think now that people's senses are more aware to the... Uh, how you are transmitting diseases and transmitting the virus. Um, I think people are going to be more cognizant of how they interact with each other. 
Yeah, that's that's a great point. The other thing is, what do you open? Now, there's a big controversy down in Georgia where the where the, the governor has said you can open up barber shops and hair salons and uh, gymnasiums and things which, you know, draw folks in, into what I'll say intimacy. I mean, it's different if you're standing six feet away from somebody. That's one thing. But when you're cutting their hair and doing massages or whatever, that seems, I mean, that's a little startling to me. <laughs> Terry, to, uh, Terry, listen, I, I uh, and I'm sure your viewers can see, I have not seen my barber in about six weeks, okay? <laughs> and anyone, a, a, anyone out there knows that the relationship that a man has with his barber, man, that is, that is a solemn bond. <laughs> and, and he and I have not been together in, 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 in six weeks, and I'm, I'm suffering for it. But what I understand, I think what people understand is that that's how you transmit the coronavirus. I mean, what, what, what Governor Kemp is doing in Georgia is, is totally wrong. The CDC thinks he's wrong. Uh, members of his legislature think he's wrong. Here's the thing. Even President Trump thinks he's wrong. Just, just the other day, President Trump, he disagrees with, with, with Governor Kemp. So what we cannot have is that kind of activity and that kind of rush to open PA back up. One quick question before I let you go. Disproportionate coronavirus effect in the African-American community. How, what, what, it, it, is there anything that can be done to minimize that? Well, I think what you've seen from this is that there's now a spotlight on health disparities in our country and in our commonwealth. Uh, and uh, the governor has put together a task force to actually look at that. And I think this is the uh, opportune time. Uh, um, you know, light is the best disinfectant. This is the opportune time to look at what we're doing here in Pennsylvania with regards to making sure that people are seeing a primary primary care physician, making sure they're up to date on, on their medical visits, making sure they're doing the things that are necessary for personal care so that when things like these happen, you know, they're, they aren't negatively affecting different aspects of our community. What we have to understand, uh, Terry, is that, um, you know, the CDC and all of our doctors are saying that this may not be the end. There could be another Absolutely. round of it. Absolutely. You know, partnered with the flu. So I think it's extremely important that we look at it now. And when we think about our economy, you know, we want to get back to work, right? But we can we can revive our economy, but we cannot revive lives. All right. Mr. Representative, I want to thank you for coming on. As I say to every guest and, and also to you, please stay safe and stay well. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks, Terry. All right, coming up, we're going to delve into personal finances. How important is that for everyone in the Commonwealth? We'll get to that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Cross State Credit Union Association. Credit unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, go to ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties, representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. All right, joining me now is Mike Wishnow. He's a senior vice president with the Cross State Credit Union Association. Michael, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Terry. Well, I'll tell you, we have a financial storm out there and it's affecting people's personal finances with the high unemployment and the other factors that are going on in our economy. So what are financial institutions doing to help individuals as you know, they try to weather this obvious uh, financial crisis that uh, individuals as well as governments and businesses face. Yeah, absolutely, Terry. I mean, uh, our financial institutions are indeed first responders of their own. Um, frankly, uh, many Americans are uh, having a tough time. We all know that. And they're coming to their financial institution and they're saying, how can you help me? And our credit unions are hearing it every day. Um, they're asking for waivers of payment, um, skip a pay, um, perhaps uh, emergency loans to get them through uh, for another month or two. Um, and all of our credit unions uh, and many of the community uh, banks as well uh, are out there offering products specific to people who are hurting in a time uh, that frankly is unprecedented. 
Yeah, you're also providing aid to a variety of community uh, activities and organizations uh, in, in counties and municipalities as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, credit unions first and foremost are for their members and we're here for our members, but we're also community financial institutions. And every credit union operates in uh, a community or, or a few communities. And, and frankly, uh, they're very engaged in those communities throughout the regular course of their business and throughout the year. Um, now, during this pandemic, there are some special niches that need to be uh, addressed. Obviously, food banks, food shortages. Um, so we have a lot of credit unions that are working locally in the community to make sure people are getting fed. Uh, masks and uh, protective uh, gear. We have several credit unions that have purchased masks and protective gear for uh, healthcare workers uh, in their communities. We have a lot of credit unions doing financial uh, counseling and, and, and coaching and uh, just doing seminars and webinars, virtual stuff, uh, again, to try and help people prepare the best they can and to help the local community. Yeah, one of the programs is called PA CARE, capital C, capital A, capital R, capital E a package. What's that about? Uh, the PA CARE package is something that actually was put together uh, by Attorney General Shapiro. And what he has done is he has asked financial institutions to uh, agree to certain uh, concessions, if you will, uh, to help uh, struggling folks. Uh, things like 90-day moratoriums on loan payments, including mortgages, 60-day um, uh, moratoriums on any kind of foreclosures or evictions or repossessions, uh, agreeing to waive fees, late fees, um, uh, bounce check fees, those kinds of things. Um, and also working with uh, the whole nother category, uh, our small businesses, which also clearly are suffering. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I want to talk about something that the federal government has been involved in, and that is providing assistance to small businesses. The latest package out of Washington includes uh, billions of dollars to assist small businesses. And I know financial institutions and credit unions are also providing that kind of assistance. We'll get to that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. All right, welcome back. All right, Mike Wishnow, there's a lot of attention being paid to small businesses and financial institutions, including credit unions, are providing help and assistance to small, small businesses. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Terry, uh, the Federal CARES uh, Initiative, which is the coronavirus uh, response, um, is geared primarily towards small businesses, but of course it does include a little bit for consumers, that's the, the $1,200 check uh, that most folks are getting. Um, but on the business side, uh, really, it was about three and a half uh, uh, trillion dollars, the initial one, um, much of which went to impacted industries, but $250 billion went to small businesses uh, in the form of two essentially programs. One is the Paycheck Protection Program, and uh, the other is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Under the Paycheck Protection Program, small businesses can get up to two and a half times their monthly payroll in a forgivable loan. Now that loan will be forgiven by the Small Business Administration, provided that the business agrees to keep a certain number of people employed, uses the money for rent, for utilities to keep the business going. Uh, that first round of uh, two, uh, $250 billion went within less than two weeks. So as we are taping today, the government is putting together a second round, which will also include $200 billion, much of which goes to this Paycheck Protection Program. Our credit unions have been inundated 
with requests for loans through this uh, SBA program. Frankly, the SBA has been uh, just inundated and that money went so quickly, many businesses didn't get it in the first round. We're very hopeful that they'll get it in the second round. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, it seems to me that there's a, a, a flood wave, if you will, of, uh, of small businesses literally teetering with whether they're going to survive or not. I mean, look at restaurants, look at bars, look at places that, you know, get frequented regularly by people. And now it, it's all off the table. Right. And, and frankly, those are the folks that are coming to the credit unions. Um, the average uh, paycheck protection loan coming through a credit union is about $100,000. You hear about the $10 million that some of the larger players are getting. But really, uh, the main street businesses, like you're saying, the restaurants, the barber shops, uh, the, the local uh, boutiques, they are having a hard time. And they're the ones really that are targeted, I believe, by the second round. Now, within the second round, Terry, uh, 60 billion has been earmarked for small community financial institutions to do the lending. So the, the goal is clearly to help the small main street business so that two, three, four months from now, whenever we get back to normal, that, that they're able to open up and hire back a handful of employees or, or, or whoever they employ. I'll tell you, what this reminds me of, given, given the fact that we have this crisis, is the need for ongoing and regular financial education, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And any other year, Terry, when we're sitting here in, in April, we talk about April as being financial education month and we talk about all the education stuff, yeah. Um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, you know, frankly, uh, for us to be positioned to withstand difficult times is very, very important. And as we've talked before on, on the show, uh, unfortunately, very few Americans have the three months worth of expenses put away that most financial advisors would recommend they, they put into their rainy day fund or their, their, their savings account. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's an ongoing situation. This isn't going to change. This only re-emphasizes the need to stay on top of, of uh, financial literacy. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, look, I want to thank you for coming on the program and you'll come back and give us these uh, important financial updates. And uh, all right, well, listen, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.